Monday, June 5th, 2023, Township of Hamilton Committee meeting to order. Please stand for the flag salute. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building, by faxing notice of this meeting to the Press of Atlantic City and Star Ledger on January 6, 2023, and by publication in the Press of Atlantic City and Star Ledger on January 9, 2023 and January 10, 2023, respectively. Mr. Cheek? Here. Mrs. Link? Here. Mr. Schenker? Here. Dr. Witherspoon? Here. Mayor Patali? Here. A moment of silence for private reflection. Okay, moving on, guest presentations, we have none. Proclamation for the Davies Boys and Girls Track Teams. Um, are the proclamations down there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. guys want to do okay. <laughs> that's it coach take control yeah, we'll <laughs> they should run up <laughs> like? come up come up here behind me I guess come on up. yeah come on up here turn around so everybody can see you Okay, we good? Uh, here we go. Paparazzi. Get ready for the paparazzi. Don't worry about smiling. Smile. <laughs> okay, whereas the William Davies Middle School track and field team competed in the first annual Cape Atlantic League track and field championship on May 23rd, 2023. And whereas at said event, the team won or placed highly in several events, reflecting their hard work and dedication to their athletic endeavors, resulting in a first second place award overall for the event. Now, therefore, we, the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, on this day, June 5th, 2023, do hereby recognize the William Davies Middle School Girls and Boys Track and Field Team. I'm going to now try to say all these names. <laughs> for the girls, Katie Burchard, Ava Fisher, Bridget Garrier, Ataria Mitchell, help me out. Atira Mitchell, I'm sorry. Just, okay. <laughs> McIntosh, Jacinth McIntosh, Brianna Patterson, Yasiana Scri yeah. Yasiana Scriven, there we go. I should probably just have you come up here and do that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm going to get Sam Brown's name wrong, please. Uh, I just, I just, uh, Sam Brown. Sam Brown. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brianna Patterson. Yasenia Scriven. Krista Williams. Uh, Marissa Yaccarino. Aliyah Gauss. Brianna Growalt. Kalia Lewis. Julia McIntosh. And Amani Muhammad were all the girls who actually uh, placed in that event. Uh, the girls' relay team was Jocelyn Ona, Julia McIntosh, Brianna Growalt, Katie Burchard. And the other girls team was Jocelyn Ona, Julia McIntosh, Kelly Branca, and Aaliyah Gauss. So those were the girls who placed. <laughs> San Savage, Makai Corbin, Luke Yaccarino, Kola Lewis, Jalen Rayford, Uthman Mitchell, Setu Jones, Caleb Pettiford, Jaden Rice, Frank... <laughs> Chambrone, Omar Kelly, Raheem Harris, Colton Greena. The boys 4-1 team was Benny Decina, Jaden Rice, Frank Chambrone, Colton Greena. 
Um, and the 4 by 2 team, Benny Decina, Jaden Rice, Frank Chambrone, uh, Chambord, <laughs> and Omar Kelly. I should have kept it. Coaches, coach begins with an A. <laughs> coach Hayden and Coach Jones. In honor of their remarkable accomplishment, this achievement is not only a credit to the hard work and dedication of these, these athletes, but is a credit to the support they have received from their families, friends, coaches, and teammates. We congratulate the William Davies Middle School track and field team and wish them the best of luck for many years to come. I also like to, uh, to note that Superintendent Zito and Principal Holstrom are also here. So thank you guys for your support. For this. Good job. You guys are welcome to see how government works. Come on. Where's everybody going? <laughs> oh, Lord. That's good. I like it. Yeah, it's like, I'd like to stay, but I got homework. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to move on. This is real simple. The next thing, addition deletions. Uh, we will be deleting 3B, discussion, sale of the former MUA building on Ken Skull Avenue. And we will be uh, deleting 8K, resolution to hire part-time fire administrator for the Township of Hamilton. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I just have it. Early public comment. We have anybody? We have Susan Lazarczyk for 3A. Okay, she wants to discuss about 3A, so we'll just wait until we, we're gonna go right into that right now. So um, we'll let you get up. She wants to kind of talk about that and give us a little bit of background on it, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, so we'll move on to 3A, ordinance prohibiting the release of balloons. So basically this is just uh, us cr wanting to uh, introduce and hopefully pass an ordinance to make it unlawful for anybody to release hot air or um, helium balloons, hot air, helium balloons. So, Susan, you want to get up and give us a little background on this? Yeah, thank you for, so I'm Susan Lazarczyk, uh, co-chair of the Green Team. Um, I, I asked you to introduce this. I participated, I'm involved, you know, Sustainable Jersey, when um, the ACUA had their green event, we had a table, we had 
a ton of people pledging not to release balloons at events. You know, do bubbles, don't do balloons. Um, I have a list of uh, other municipalities in the county that already have ordinances. I know the county itself has an ordinance. Um, and, you know, pictures of ospreys carrying balloons into their nests, in the ocean, um, on the beaches. You know, there's, um, it said, trash has been found in more than half of all osprey nests. Birds use trash for nesting material. Unfortunately, adult birds and their tick chicks get tangled up in the debris. <coughs> um, you know, so it's just common sense, it should be, to do this. So I appreciate you presenting this, and I hope that this is passed. And any questions? Um, I, I have one question. This one. How are we going to notify the public about this um, new ordinance? Good question. Um, well, so I know Steve Giusecki from the Long Beach Sustainability Team, they have a display that we were supposed to do at our Green Bear, but it didn't happen. But certainly we could do a pledge at events. Um, you know, I'm open to hearing other things too. I'm sure we could put it on our website, put it on the, um, the message board. We could send it out on our Regroup. And when the sustainability team does, you know, tables at events, we can certainly talk about it and have people pledge for their own private <coughs> events. If they're not in the township because they won't be able to do it in the township anymore. Uh, what happens with those archways that are made out of helium balloons? So this is just about releases. So some, you know, that's, I mean, if people, I mean, of course, there can be issues with those because sometimes they get away, um, but it's not a purposeful release. I mean, some people purposely say, oh, let's release balloons, it's lovely. But, I mean, it would be better, I would say, for no one to use balloons at all because they could get away, but it's not for that. It's for purposely releasing balloons for events. So instead of releasing balloons, do bubbles, do something else. There's, you know, and actually it was interesting that the Balloon Council when uh, Margate did this, they were opposed initially, and they have retracted that, and they now support um, not having balloon releases. I, I absolutely support it, Susan. It's just that I do know that a lot of people go to um, graveyards, and they release balloons in honor of their loved ones. So just trying to make sure that people were aware that they could not do that, right. was, that was my only concern. No, absolutely, and it's um, hopefully, you know, sooner or later people will, I don't know, is there a penalty for releasing balloons? Or is yes. It, you know, $500. $500. So Not to it, exceed the sum of $500. I mean, I think it's like everything. Um, you know, you, you educate as much as you can. Sooner or later the word gets out. People share, hey, you're not supposed to do that. Um, you know, it's education for all kinds of things as a process. And certainly as the co-chair of the sustainability team, um, when we're tabling and when we're doing <coughs> things, and um, we will certainly do our best to also promote that. Thank you. So, right? mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, for instance, if it's a group that is releasing balloons, who is charged with a $500 fine? I would think you would charge every person that released a balloon. Well, sometimes it's a whole a group that is doing that and uh, does the uh, the uh, police have to see them releasing the balloons to to uh, write the ticket Greg you want to <laughs> let us know Obviously, yeah, if we saw it, we could sign a complaint, but without us saying it, it somebody else would have to sign a complaint that saw it. So, um, that's about it. If you sign a complaint, then you're the one that has to show up at court to that's right. be the yeah. witness that you saw it, and then. Right. So, I, I think it's a great thing. I, I think it, it does help out the environment, but I don't know how many people are going to come forward to spend their day in court to do this, and I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying that, you know, they're, they're, it's going to be a big hurdle to, 
to jump over. So I think it, it's great. You know, it, it does help protect the environment. So. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, through public announcements in our uh, website, it really is a terrible thing for these animals to be engaging these balloons and they could come from a long distance off really so uh, you know uh, ask our people in the town to do their duty and uh, you know explain to their children please don't release that balloon that you have in your in your hand so so do I hear a motion to uh, go ahead and, and create this ordinance? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okie dokie. Moving on. 3C. Nope, C. C. B was deleted. deleted. Discussion item, Route 552, Bears Head Road, and Pittsburgh Avenue. Uh, traffic comment. Who's regretting what? The presenter for tonight for the discussion on Millville Avenue is no other than the officer in charge, Jim James Jacoby. Take it off now. Do you want to sit, Jim? Uh, you can have a seat and take uh, my mic. I appreciate that. The mayor, permission to approach? Permission granted. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, boy. Is this the proposals? Yeah. He's, I'm sure he's going to have them up there. If I start talking really fast, it's not because I'm nervous. I'm just really excited to actually get this underway. It's been about six, actually eight months we've been working on this. So here goes. I have a presentation, obviously, over on the video board. Um, it's about 10 minutes. If I go over my 10 minutes, please ring a bell, do something. Start the timer. Yes. Yeah. Where's... Um, uh, that's easier. So for those of you who don't know me in the, in the, on the committee, uh, I've been with the Township of Hamilton for 19 years. I spent all 19 in the patrol division. And before I started here, I had one summer with the North Wildwood Police Department. This is my 20th year. Education and training, I got my master's degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University. And my traffic schools were from University of North Florida. Kane University and Northwestern University. Um, you can see it's tra tra traffic crash reconstruction, crash two and crash one. So the overview of this project is um, about, let's say that last September, we ended up responding to two different um, fatal accidents. They actually happened within a week of each other. Um, and then the following month, we had another serious bodily injury involving a motorcycle. More specifically, it was County Route 552 Millville Avenue at the S-curve. Um, at that point, myself some and the command staff, we got together. We realized that we had to do something to obviously eradicate these crashes. We had to be proactive, um, and that's what we ended up doing. So just an overview on Millville Avenue. Um, I know it's a big township. I don't know how often people actually go to the west side of the township. They don't have to. Millville Avenue, County Route 552, is a two-lane highway that runs east-west through our township for a total distance of 4.71 miles. This roadway is a major thoroughfare for commuters traveling from Millville and Vineland to our shopping districts and local shore points. Over the last five years, Millville Avenue has been subject to many complaints of erratic and aggressive driving, which have resulted in motor vehicle crashes. Some of those crashes result in serious vital injury and or death, like I just stated. The most serious crashes occurred near the S-curve in the area of Pittsburgh Avenue. Uh, most recent fatal crashes were September 21st of last year and March 23rd of this year. Those, are, those two that I have listed were on the S-curve. 
Um, I believe it was 914. We had one right at the beginning of Millville Avenue on Route 40. It was a pedestrian that was hit. So I didn't list that one because we're talking about the S curve for this particular project. But Millville Avenue still has obviously crashes and other uh, parts of the roadway. So let's go over some data. Um, I made this kind of hopefully sh uh, short and sweet. So when we're looking at the data, we have two pictures of Millville Avenue. This is looking at the S curve. The picture on the left is looking westbound. Right, it's right. As you're going westbound, you, you start to drift kind of left and that's the beginning of the curve. And this is more of the straightaway section. The mile post I have listed, mile post 25.15, is right at the base of the South River Bridge. Um, that's important because on the slide on the right with mile post 25.06, that's looking at it eastbound and it's right at Pittsburgh Avenue. The data that we collected was basically one-tenth of a mile or just under one-tenth of a mile. So it was 520 feet. These pictures were taken the other day, so this is exactly how Millville Avenue looks right now. With the, we have uh, bridge construction on the right, and I guess that's pretty much it for right now. There's obviously damage to the guardrail from other crashes. So the crash data source, we got it through the state uh, online system, and obviously through our records. Um, basically the same thing for the crash data type. So total crashes, this is in that one-tenth of a mile. We had one in 2018, three in 2019, six in 2020, eight in 21, two in 22, and three in 23. Um, and if you go back a few slides, I apologize. Um, let me go back here. I should have. So the crash data was from, 12, uh, from December 15th of 2018 through April 18th of this year. So of those crash types, fixed objects was with the guardrail, 19 of them. So basically, you know, almost 95% of them were. Opposite direction, head on, that's where two, obviously two vehicles are coming at each other and they go head on. And then the side swipe is where they just kind of clip each other. Uh, those were three and one. Total injuries in these crashes were 12, so just about half of them resulted in injury. Or, um, I'm sorry, half of the crashes resulted in injury and then total injured, 17 of those 23 crashes. Total fatalities three, or sorry, excuse me, total fatal crashes three, total fatalities three. Alcohol use known was three of them. Alcohol use unknown was one. Um, I believe we did get toxicology back from the last fatal. I believe that's the, that last um, alcohol use unknown. Um, I just not, did not have that data yet. So the horizontal alignment of the road was curved left were 15, curved right were seven, and straight were one. That's basically where the, the car that's in question either drifts left or right, and that's how we do that on our crash diagrams. Time of occurrence, you can see, obviously, nothing really happens after midnight. Uh, it picks up a little bit from 6 a.m. to 11.59, and then the sweet spot is basically from noon to 6 p.m. And that's where you had the majority with 13. Um, road surface conditions, obviously we, we handle a lot of crashes anywhere in the township when it's wet, uh, 15. Um, that's all part of the improvement that the county's doing, which I'll get, which I'll get to, is that Bears Head Road not, out in that particular location, the friction's gone. You get a little bit of wetness or ice on that roadway, forget about it, if you're going too fast, it's over. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna play bumper cars with the guardrails. Uh, environmental conditions, like obviously clear being 12, but you know, rain plays a huge factor up there. And we see most of them are in daylight, which was kind of alarming when you think about it because um, most people can see during the daylight. I mean, it, it's a darkness that's out there, kind of, it makes it, a, it hinders your ability to see if you're not, you know, because we don't have adequate signage out there. So these are the corrective measures that County DOT is going to be completed by the end of 2023. They're gonna mill and repave with high friction asphalt coating, similar to the surface on Route 50 near Old Egg Harbor Road. Um, that's gonna be key because that, your tires are, gonna, are basically gonna grab that. Um, it should help with people who are going too fast into the curve. They'll get, they'll get some relief and hopefully be able to do a, a, do a correction of their steering without hitting the guardrail. 
They're going to install optical speed bars when approaching the curve in both directions. On the plans that I gave you, they have the speed bars listed in the, or they have them drawn out in the lanes. Basically, there are lines that are put within the lanes, and the further out you are, the more distance you have. As you get closer, they start to, they start to come closer, and it creates an optical illusion to the driver. Uh, they're going to increase signage in both directions. And the replacement of the South River Bridge, uh, I anticip anticipated completion is by 26. They, like I showed you in that one slide, they redid the right side, but that was more or less how the um, guardrail was going to be. They are going to obviously wipe that bridge completely out and redo the whole thing. So we gathered the data. We spoke, uh, you know, the, the commanders uh, spoke, and they, and they asked me, and they asked Sergeant Smith, like, what do you think? What should we do? So we ended up meeting with the county engineers back in March. Uh, we expressed our concerns, and I will give the chief a lot of credit, though, uh, not because he's here, because he thought of it and I didn't, was one of the things that the county didn't do was they didn't go out and survey the residents. And they didn't, like, they went basically all by strict data. Um, I mean, they, they live out there. It's, it's, it's their homes. It's what's going to improve their, their way of life. So we ended up making a questionnaire. One of the, on the questionnaire was, how do you feel about like a flashing, flashing signs or some sort of uh, advance warning. How do you feel about like rumble strips? And it was just, it was a quick survey about anything you should do to um, enhance safety in the area. So we ended up pulling, um, those are addresses. I have them listed on another form, but as you can see, those are where I put the numbers are on the properties. We basically, there's three houses right at the, right at the hard curve, and then the remaining four, five, six, and seven, they're away from the curve. But we've had plenty, basically, when people were coming eastbound, they hit the guardrail, they ended up, some, they ended up sometimes over where position number five is. And then people coming westbound, the actual crashes sometimes that they're not paying attention, especially like motorcycles, they'll lay their bikes down around position like house number seven. So it was important, the reason why it looks like it's lopsided about who was pulled is because I went off personal experience as to where these crashes were and how they're affected from um, my experience. So after, like I said, after meeting with the county, after pulling our residents, these are the additional traffic safety measures we think will best suit our community and our township. Um, a curved warning system, basically, as you can see in the photo, it's flashing chevrons. And I'll get, there's another slide I'll get to, it'll, it'll make more sense. Uh, basically, those will be installed in the curve. They'll be battery operated. And this way you have advanced warning coming eastbound and westbound. They'll sit on the, if you're going westbound, they sit on the left side by Pittsburgh. Um, right now there's no flashing lights out there. Um, I, when I was putting this together, I was thinking about, like I said, 19 years ago when I started, we had to run out there, me and the officer had to run out there to help uh, Doug McLean with something. And we came to the S curve from the MISPA side. And I just couldn't believe, like, I was a young kid at the time, but I couldn't believe that there was no advance warning. Like, it just seemed like this was a death trap, even in 2004. So you see the data obviously shows us that we're still seeing a spike in fatalities. We're seeing a spike in crashes. So that's why we feel that this is warranted. The other thing we looked at uh, was an additional measure was a, uh, a radar speed sign. Um, if anybody travels through Egg Harbor City, they have one sitting on a trailer. This is a little bit different. This would be a fixed one. And basically, it'll show your speed, but you can, depending on which, which brand you buy, it can collect data, but it can also give you a sign like slow down, and it's going to come at you like, with like LEDs. There's other ones that also kind of like hit you with like a laser, kind of like blinds you. I know it sounds unsafe, but this way, you know, if you're coming in 4 o'clock in the morning and you don't know the roadway, and you know you should have the chevrons lit up, but this other thing is another safety measure. So we got a brief video on there if we have internet, right? I guess we don't have the internet for it. That was my whole presentation. Oh, never mind. Sorry about that.
This is for the traffic on curve warning system, obviously, the first thing we talked about with the Our Chevrons. 1987. We are industry pioneers, electronics manufacturers, ISO 9001 certified. Above all, we are families on the roadway with you. Nationally, tens of thousands of people die every year on our roadway. So <coughs> kind of get the uh, gist of what's going on with that. So the big question I'm sure everybody's probably thinking, um, what does this cost? Well, I'll just come out and post it though. Approximate cost for both things is about $40,000. Um, it all depends how intelligent you want them to be. Do you want them to collect data? Do you, uh, I mean, there's different types of traffic comm systems as far as the curve warning and for the radar uh, speed signs. These were obviously priced through Garden State products out of Millville. I mean, there's places across the country that offer these, these types of products. Um, this is something we can, we can obviously shave down or could go up in price. Um, but it being a county roadway, obviously, it's the county's the one that's in charge of what goes out there. Um, basically, what you're looking at on the left, you're looking westbound again, on the, it's on the left side of the road. And you're looking on the right, you're looking eastbound. See, we already have five chevrons up. Um, my proposal would be that they would just, the, this, the traffic comm system would just replace those chevrons as they were. Basically, they're double-sided. They're on a 45 degree angle and they would, they would be lit up. They have plenty of sunlight for the solar with the battery. They're protected by the guardrail if they were to get damaged. Um, and basically, that's basically it for that. Um, any questions for the committee? I know years ago um, there was issue with drainage and water going across the roadway. Was that all so taken care of great, by the county? That's a great question. Um, the jet, well, if I go back to that one slide, if you look all the way off to the right where the, I put like house number seven, the gentleman actually wasn't pulled, he, but he used to get the water across. I, I think that it was rectified. Every time we've had a heavy rain, I don't see any issues with him pumping or anything rolling across the road and going down the eastbound side. That was a problem years ago. I do remember. Um, the uh, sun, uh, at daylight it seems that there's more accidents. Is there any problem with the sun beating into the driver's, you know, eyes and not seeing? I, I mean, 
a lot of times it comes down. You talk, so from Middle Avenue, as far as Sun Glare, I don't, I don't distinctly remember me personally handling any crashes. It's got a lot of canopy with the trees. When you get Sun Glare crashes, they're mainly 322 eastbound in the morning when the sun's poking up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out there, it's like I said, it's, uh, it's a little bit more shaded. So I think we're good in, in that a, regard. Now, is the county going to participate in the cost? That would be, that's why I'm presenting it to you, to the committee. Um, obviously, when we voiced our concerns, they, you know, they have project money that needs to be spent by the end of the year, and they're going to complete what they need to complete other than the completion of the bridge. Um, I would hope that if this is something we're serious with, I don't know if, how we do cost sharing. I know we're already doing stuff at the dam and, and fuel tanks. I mean, if it's something that maybe we can't go after this year because of budget constrictions, maybe we can hit it up in the future because ultimately they're going to make these corrections and what we're going to do is something that can be added after the fact, you know. So like I said, this doesn't have to be, you know, dead in the water because they're doing their project this year. But a question. Yes, ma'am. Because it is a county road, the county would be responsible for it. So basically you're just wanting us to push them along. Oh. I guess. Uh... Okay pass a resolution right. asking them to resolution yep. of support yeah it's a resolution of support all right all right thank That's you yeah. thank you. One question. Sure. you when you said the bridge uh, is getting reconstructed is that before the s curve or is it within the s curve because you're saying that they're going to be paving the road it's this a, year i didn't know if they're going to rip up the pavement that they're repaving the road with if there's so, bridge being redone? That's a great question because I don't really, I'm gonna, I don't know the 100% answer. I would imagine it, maybe the bridge might, might be concrete that particular section. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what they're gonna do, but they said that there's a total bridge reconstruction and obviously it's gonna take a few years. Um, but they, the things that I listed on the PowerPoint, they, had, they said they have to physically have done by end of this calendar year. So the paving was part of that? The paving for, and like you said, where the okay. bridges, if you remember like on, this, on the uh, slide, it was more the bridge is set eastbound. back. Yeah, the bridge is set back a little bit further, but um, I don't know how many feet they're going to put that high friction coating. If you look at Route 50 in Old Lake Harbor, they have it like you know so many feet before the turn and Correct. so many feet after. So maybe there's it's something on their end with the engineering. Yeah. Maybe it's going to butt right up to it. I would imagine they're not going to spend that kind of money. I'm just saying, and then have it get ripped up. Yeah. But I've seen weirder things though. Mayor, I can reach out to them and get some more information so everybody knows more time frames because I feel if they're going to be doing a bridge replacement, they're shutting the road down soon. Absolutely. So we should be aware of that and notify anybody if it's going to happen in the next couple of years. But that, that's a big bridge replacement. And uh, you just reminded me of something with shutting the road down. Uh, Mayor, one of, the, one of the biggest hiccups with um, whether it's being an acting supervisor or being a, a, a patrol officer is you go out there for a fatal serious bodily injury, even, a, even just somebody hitting the guardrail. Say there's two cars involved. You have to tie up an officer at the scene. Then you have to tie up additional officers before and after the scene because you can't let anybody else in because the roadway is completely, it's narrow. Then you have tow trucks. And basically, like I said, every time we go out there for an accident, it's a, it becomes more of a manpower issue and we don't become efficient as a police department. So anything we could do to mitigate those crashes, obviously, puts us in different spots of the township where we need to be. Okay? Absolutely. I have a question for the solicitor. This is a county road. If we alter the county signs, are we responsible? It needs to be something that was done by the county, in my understanding. I think the strong thing to do would be pass the resolution in support of these changes based on the information provided by the police department this evening. But ultimately, I think it needs to go through the county with the help of our engineer. My office can help. Oh, I'm sorry. And that, that, if I can step in here for a second. So all we're asking tonight, we wanted to give you that presentation tonight. All we're asking of you, uh, of the committee tonight, is to get your support to, um, at, in the form of re resolution, to um, tell the county or ask the county to, to start thinking about these measures. Obviously, it's a great deal of money that we don't want to burden the taxpayers with, but, but we do think that it needs to be looked at. Um, when we met with the county um, for the, the current road improvements, I was a little shocked because the engineers um, said that they didn't, they didn't survey the, the, the people who lived around there, the residents, 
and they were concerned with noise uh, and the lights flashing and things of that nature. That's why I instructed Jim and, and his team to go out there and survey those residents to see if they'd rather have tables <coughs> out there and all these crashes or a couple of blinking lights and everything and um, maybe the, the noise that, that the um, some of the road, uh, what do they call it, Jim? Rumble strips. Rum yes. Yeah, rumble strips would make um, to prevent them from going off the roadway or, or wake them up. So it's really not, um, <clears throat> this is really just the support of, listen, we have to do something and we really need to look into this a little bit better um, instead of just doing a roadway. And, and it's a start. It, we're moving in the right direction, but clearly from the accidents that you saw tonight that he, that we're on a presentation, something needs to get done. So that's all we're really asking. And it will be the county. These are suggestions that are going to the county. So it will be a joint effort no matter what uh, with the county if we do something. So. We can uh, reach out to SJTPO as well because they usually do a lot of traffic calming and traffic improvements through grants. And we can work with the county in trying to receive those grants to improve something out I there. I believe that these projects, I want to say there's seven or eight in the township or in the county that are being done off the grant that they currently have. It okay. has to be finished by the end right. of this year. Okay. So that that's why it was grant money from the start. Right. And why they wouldn't look to, to do a little bit extra out there, I'm uncertain of. But, okay. you know, besides their explanation of the noise and the, uh, the lighting and stuff. So. So basically that's all we're asking is that um, a resolution that we, we support, you know, doing additional safety measures out there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Thank you. So Kevin, to answer my question, so basically we're just going, approving this to ask the county to do it and support the county. Correct. The county still has to do it themselves because it's their road. That is correct, Deputy Mayor. Um, if you were to proceed this evening, I'd recommend you do a supporting resolution simply recognizing your desire to increase the safety measures on this particular stretch of road. Um, and you know, if you want to include the types of improvements that you'd like to see out there in addition to any improvements the county is already undertaking, such as the, the lighted chevrons or the, um, the speed sign, you could put that in the resolution as well. I, I don't think that we can do it ourselves. I think the engineer uh, would need to work with the, the county as he's just indicated. This isn't a resolution we're going to pass tonight. This is something you guys have to work on for the next meeting. Resolution. Yeah, this was just a discussion item. We can certainly prepare something for you to look at prior to the next hearing, if you'd like. Absolutely. Okay. Great. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really glad to see this happen. Um, every time there's an accident out there, especially when there's a fat fatality, I get phone calls. I'm sure everybody else does, gets text, phone calls, um, blows up on social media. Um, why isn't anything being done and, and, and all of that? So this is a great first step. And I'm glad to hear that the county already has been working on this, but I agree. I think more can be done and we'll, we'll push to make sure that more is done. So now's the time to do it while they're paving. That's when their eyes are on it. Yeah. So I would push to get it done while they're paving, not after the fact for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Four A, public hearing, ordinance 2045-2023, an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, regarding requirement for inspection of lead-based paint in certain residential dwellings. This is a public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Dix, the questions are how will you be determining which structures have to be inspected? Right. And I'm saying structures because I don't want to limit it to a residence. It could be a commercial building or a residence. It's, it's just, just rentals. It's just rentals constructed on or before 1978. So our software. Just rentals. Right. So it won't be every single house that's like going up for sale and a different buyer's going in. No, just no. just rentals. Why? Because that's what that's the state what the said. State, that's what the state has directed us to do right now. It could change in the future, but right now it's just for rentals. 
so rentals 1978 or older with, with, with my memory is all of powder mill springs now called brandywood and pinelands gardens all of meadowbrook condos all of sandpiper formerly Had hadley woods hundred apartments cologne avenue apartments not all of them but many of them um, the Woodlands was started in about 1972, so uh, at least the first 100 units probably predates the 1978 date. Um, and I think Bay's Landing Village is not rental, and they started around 82. Um, so I think the apartment complexes that I was targeting were those Powder Mill to Meadowbrook to Hadley Woods to Cologne and out to the Woodlands. So all of those. I know. I, to the, Brett, I believe some, some of those don't have to be inspected, right? They already know. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you say some of those, what, what do you mean, Carl? Some, are already. some have already been in. I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn, Brett. I was given some information by the construction office. Um, we're working with our SDL. We have the SDL software. That the, what? the SDL software inventories all the units that we have in the township. Um, right now, we're almost at 200 units, but we're still going through the, the software to, to actually. But that's only as good many. as the data that was put into right. it. I'm sorry. And to it interrupt changes, you. and it changes because units are taken away if, if they're not being rented. I'm just talking about single-family rentals, um, and then we add if units are, have been added through the years. So it's just right now we're still working through it to try to hash down how many, hash out how many units we actually have, but we know it has to be done every three years. Okay. So after the initial inspection, they would have three years. So you think single again. family homes that are used as rentals if they were built before 1978? Right, if they're registered as a, as a rental unit. But I thought we didn't have rental registrations because of the, we lost that lawsuit. We have an inventory of how many are in the township. It's just figuring, it's just separating out all the rentals that we have before 1978. All right. Thanks. Anybody else from the public? Motion to close. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to move the ordinance. <coughs> I have a motion. Second. This, you said. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Just, just oh, I'm sorry. Chief. That's a question. Uh, I didn't really realize, and I thank you for the list, that um, some of these are landmarks that we will be that will be getting inspected. Oh, you're look you're looking at the HPC grant information. That's a different. Oh. On the, that's not this. No, it's one. It, no, that's not it. That's this. One more page. I think it's. Okay. All right. So it's just the apartments. Okay. Got well, it. Uh, are you able to separate those which have already been changed or met the requirements for? No, we would have to do an initial inspection. Oh, okay. And then each inspection would cost the uh, owner fifty dollars or two hundred. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. And if they have several apartments, each one will be two hundred dollars. Brett, that's a one-time. It's every th it's every three years, or as the <clears throat> as the uh, rentals turn over. So if they get a new tenant before three years, they have to get it reinspected. Okay. All right. Excuse me. A question. On this paper that I do have with the units, the 1,012 uh, rental units were already inspected. That's, I just went off of what we did last year. Right. But I'm saying this is the information right here. Mm -hmm. it, it, it indicates this is phase three, right? No, you're still you're still back on the uh, no. You're on we, the unit. You're on the grant information. No, I'm not. 
And you look at yeah, this. I'm okay. I just wanted to make sure. See here. Yes. Okay, it was this put is, on. It, it was confusing because it was yeah, put on the same. This is for the, the uh, historic grant that we got, forty-nine thousand. We we talked about that. But this is for the like, for the legend section. Okay, can you see why? Excuse me. Excuse me. One second. You, you know, you can stay right here. Can you see why this was confusing to me? Because you have this, so this is separate from this. The separate agenda. Okay, but it's on the same page. Seven okay, okay, I got it. I got it. All right, thank you. Got it. Good. I'm good. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Dr. Witherspoon. Yes. Mayor <laughs> Patel. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Five A Introduction Ordinance twenty forty six twenty twenty three an ordinance authorizing the sale of lot one in block six hundred as shown on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton, granting to the owner or owners of said real property contiguous to same the right to prior refusal to purchase such land in the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey. So I moved. A motion. I have a motion. Second. A motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Oops. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? So moved. 5B. Introduction Ordinance 2047-2023. An ordinance amending Chapter 167 of the township code to provide for or amend the fees for certain land development applications. We hear a motion. Is it, excuse, excuse me, Mayor. Is this public still public hearing? Or is no, it, this is this is introduction. Okay. Okay. I have a couple questions. Okie dokie. Um, how do these fees compare to, say, Galloway or EHT? Bill, you're the next contestant. Come on down. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Mrs. Link, uh, when we do these, we, we benchmark with the other municipalities in the area. Um, in fact, we're bringing several of our things up to levels where Egg Harbor Township and Galloway have been for several years. So as it stands now, we'll be at the same level. Same. Uh, who knows what they're going to be doing as far as their fees this year. Uh, now, uh, on the, the uh, cost, the basis, is it on an hourly rate? For which? For any one of these items, administrative fees, uh, Site plan, non-residential. Uh, how do we the, 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 the administrative fee we, we charge is, is our best estimate of how long it takes to internally process the, these applications and get everything organized on our part and to be able to distribute them to the appropriate uh, board members, et cetera. The escrow amounts, uh, you know, that's the initial collection and that money, uh, how that's accounted for ultimately it's the professionals submitted invoices for their services mm -hmm. which helps pay for that uh, sometimes there are refunds to the escrows uh, sometimes probably a lot of time you know applicants have to come in with more money because of the complexity of their applications and it involves more review time uh, we, we try to do a good job with the, particularly with the, the fees we charge of uh, making sure that the cost for our township staff to do the work is covered. Are these uh, fees well known to developers? Yes. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the only things in here that are new uh, that uh, you should be aware of is the um, one thing is the witnessing of soil borings. That's something that in the past, I mean, for the longest time, Pinelands Commission would have somebody out witnessing borings in, in their areas. And I know that uh, you know, township engineer, at least when Jim Holmes was here, he would, he would show up occasionally, but uh, there really hadn't been any, anybody verifying that, okay, yeah, that, that's a good, good depth and, and you've got the right information. Uh, the other couple items that are new are for the uh, residential zoning permits for the one and two family dwellings. Uh, the escrow fee for actually it's post construction inspections by the engineer um, and that's applicable both on the in the subdivisions that are un under construction as well as the individual spot lots uh, it's partly because of the stormwater regulations that, that we now have to follow uh, the other is that with the modifications to the uh, bonding uh, requirements that were done what was that three or four years ago bob mm -hmm. uh, a lot of items like individual site landscaping etc that were were bonded where the uh, engineer could do the inspection under the uh, escrow posted for the overall site inspections are no longer bondable items so that this covers our, our cost because our engineer has to go out there and make sure that the grading is proper, the water's draining away, and it's not causing any issues. So those are two new items that, that we've incorporated. And uh, does that come under zoning permits? Yes, yeah, zoning permits uh, for residential, new single-family dwellings, <coughs> and also uh, two-family or townhouse dwellings. On the multifamilies and the and the others, those are basically site plan so that it's covered under under that uh, uh, performance guarantee inspections <clears throat> and then one other thing that's that's gonna that's new on here is uh, a conceptual meeting with the board professionals correct correct right. where there won't no fee that's no fee, fee. 15 correct. minutes mm -hmm. where is that at is that's on our ordinance right yes And through the years, we've had many issues and or complaints, however you want to call it, with, uh, with the uh, workshops. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will yeah. smooth things out a little bit and, and help people to understand what needs to be done without them having to post an escrow and pay a fee. It kind of uh, helps everybody out to keep a little bit of money in their pocket and get some some time with our professionals um, now who would be doing this 15-minute thing with the uh, proposal that would be decided by um, either zoning or typically they'll come request a meeting from Phil or the zoning officer right. and it would be the zoning board professionals or the uh, planning board professionals would come in and we set up a workshop. We, we have one tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So yeah. that's, that's typically how they do yeah. that. And, and that would be, basically it would just be, wouldn't be the full gamut of, of board professionals, just be the engineer and planner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, again, these typically would be, uh, you know, very preliminary discussions. They may have a, something sketched out, just mm -hmm. so these guys can provide guidance to them as far as, you know, what their process is <coughs> and their next steps. And then uh, hopefully they will come back in with the application where uh, more thorough review could be done. To do the complete workshop. Then. Yeah. Under, under the, once the application is filed as they're going through the review process. It, it, after they have this 15 minute mm -hmm. meeting, at that point then they would file an application? Well, it's gonna, not, not after, <laughs> It depends on how well. Uh, uh, I mean, they could. How far along they are, could they possibly? More than likely, they would. Uh, 
engage, engage the professional and go through the, the design process and, and put together the full <coughs> set of plans and then Before go through the application process, yes. Okay, so they prepare for <coughs> Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. okay. I have a motion and a second. Well, I have a motion, I don't have a second. Oh, do I have a second? Second. Now I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving this? Aye. 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 Against? Ayes have it. 5C. Right? Yes. Introduction of Ordinance 2048-2023, a bond ordinance appropriating $500,000 from the Capital Improvement Fund for various capital improvements to township facilities, purchase public safety equipment, and purchase a new slash retrofit ambulance. No. Yes. We have a motion. So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion and a second. Questions or comments? Um, yeah. Is this within our our budget? How does this work out? Yes. It's within our budget. Within our budget. Yes. Okay. It's something that had been considered before. Yes. Okay. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Ayes have it. 6A. Authorize engineering services to Mott Watkins Associates for design, permitting, and construction and inspection services for reconstruction of New York Avenue Phase 5 municipal aid fiscal year 2023 in the amount of $45,000. So move. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Just one question. Oh, go ahead. How long is this phase going to take? So actually, this uh, project is going to be coming in. Uh, the bids are coming in on Thursday. Uh, if the bids we think are coming in as they are, we should hopefully be able to award it perhaps at the next meeting and then be under construction in July. And that phase is from where they stopped on phase four and through the bridge area to the curve of New York Avenue. So pave up where they paved at the bridge, pick up, go yeah, past the we'll bridge, pick up over the bridge. We and then take us to the end, take <laughs> us all the way around the curve to the curve, almost to Harbor uh, Avenue there. Um, Basically, I consider, that really the, I consider bad, the curve the end. So. Yeah, the really bad <laughs> section will be paved this summer. So, is, so we will have a detour. Uh, we will have a detour for one day when they um, mill and base pave, and then we'll wait a week, and then we'll probably have another detour one day for top paving. That's the plan. All right, thank you. So, it won't yeah, be like well, days on days of yeah, detours. Weeks and weeks no, 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 no. It should be one day, and then the next week will be another day. That's their plan. Our plan. So, Thank you. Very quick. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patali? Yes. Oh, yes. 6B, authorize engineering services to Mount Watkins Associates for design permitting and construction and inspection services for Leapy Field parking reconstruction in the amount of $14,000. Mayor, I just want to say that this uh, amount is actually just being reallocated from the general engineering fund. So the general engineering that you guys awarded, I put into a fund in the beginning of the year. We're just subtracting it out of it and allocating that 14,000 from there. So we're not requesting more money. It's just allocating that 14,000 there. So Understood. Okay. So You're taking the money from what we already taking got. money that was allocated for our services to do special projects and allocating that motion second so, i have a motion and a second roll call vote please mr cheek yes mrs link yes mr shanker yes dr witherspoon yes mayor patelli yes oh yes six c authorized remington and vernick engineers to provide engineering services for the above ground storage tanks at the public works yard in the amount of forty eight thousand dollars Move the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? 
Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patali? Yes. Oh, yes. Six D, approve the leasing of temporary diesel fuel tanks and the fuel on a month to month basis to Riggins Incorporated of Vineland, New Jersey for an amount not to exceed $60,000. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, will this be shared with the uh, county? No, this one no. not. This is this just is for just, fueling our This equipment. is just for our public works and fire department. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. Oh, yes. 6E, authorizing the sale of surplus property no longer needed for public use to Brinley Mountain Fire Apparatus LLC in the amount of $67,000 in, conjunct in conjunction with the purchase of fire apparatus from Sutphin Corporation. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patelli? Yes. Oh. 6F. Award of contract for purchase of a custom monarch pumper tenders from Sutphin Corp through Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program in the amount of $1,227,171.23. So move this resolution. Second. I have a motion in multiple seconds. Roll call vote, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patali? I am very happy to vote yes and move this forward. It's taken quite some time. Thank you to, to the guys from Maze Landing for all the hard work that they did putting this together. I know it wasn't easy and it was beyond frustrating sometimes, but here we are. Thanks, guys. Um, I also understand that the $67,000 uh, uh, will be uh, 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 Sort of subtracted from the one two two seven, mm -hmm. which is a, a great thing too. Yes, and uh, we were able to get uh, better numbers for our older tanks, and th that was a good thing. That yeah, that was good. Good work, Brett, on that, and yes. kind of going back and forth. We didn't just accept the first offer. We uh, we we got the most that we could possibly get. Mm -hmm. So good job there too. Thanks, Brad and, and, and Cynthia too. Thank you. Thanks to everybody. Uh, 6G, resolution approving amended share services agreement with Atlantic County for fueling. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patelli? Yes. yes. Consent agenda. Anybody want to? I'll make a motion to uh, accept A through O, with the exception of D. I'd like to pull D out. Okie dokie. So I'll second. Move. I have a motion and a second for mm -hmm. A through O, with the exception of D. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. D. Resolution denying release of stormwater maintenance guarantee for Hamilton Mall expan expansion phase one, stormwater management system basin remediation, excuse me, in the amount of $114,847.80 due to incomplete punch list items as recommended by Township Engineer Robert Watkins in his correspondence dated 522-23. We getting anywhere? So we met with them uh, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, Deputy Mayor met as well with the, um, I guess you'd say maintenance uh, director, and we have not heard back. Um, we sent the letter out, so they're not getting their money back until 
there's work being done and they're aware of it. We updated our punch list with just updated pictures, uh, attached uh, EDA's punch list, right? And said, it's all gotta be done. You're not okay. getting it back. And we, set, we had an email uh, from them, I think last week, Jane, I think there was another email asking for where is this at? And we told them, get busy. Okay. So we're on it and it won't. So how long has this been going on now? Between it's the first time they've doing. requested was, I guess, a, a m couple months ago, uh -huh. maybe, and that's where we're at. So it's just still there. I think we just have to keep an eye on the bond uh, that it doesn't expire. So I don't know when that will or if it does expire. It's cash. It's cash. So even better, it won't expire. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Cash is king. Cash is. Mm -hmm. Is there cash anything is else we can do to? The only other thing would be is the town could go in there and do the work and put a lien on the property. If you really want to do something, you're permitted to do that. But I don't know if we really want to take that on right now, okay. but you are permitted to do that. All right. So. I would say just continue with what weekly emails. $114,000 is a good cash amount, I would think. Yeah. So. All right. Thank oh, you. You got it. Okay, do I have a motion moving or? Uh, so moved. Second, do we have a second? Second. Motion to second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, against, ayes have it. Eight A appointment of Samantha Leapy as a full time police officer for the police department. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion in the second. We need roll call votes on these. Yes, yes right. Yes. yes. We do. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Dr. Witherspoon. Yes. Mayor Patelli. Yes, and congrats and congratulations. Eight B appointment of Edward Melton as a full-time police officer for the police department. So moved. moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patelli? Yes, and congratulations. Oh, yes. Appointment of Jonathan Laboy as a full-time police officer for the police department, effective June 7th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Uh, yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes, and congratulations. Oh, yes. Mayor, I'd just like to say um, I, we sat in on the interviews, and we are very fortunate to be able to get three very good candidates for the police department. We did very well this go round. Um, so, and, and as the police chief has stated before, um, the amount of people who are applying to be police officers these days has dropped significantly. So uh, we're very fortunate to find three, three very good candidates. So very good job. Yes. Yes. And, and this was uh, replacing four that had left our retirements every, through retirement. Three. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we'll still end up down one. One. So. Um, and Sam Leapy already worked for the township with Public Works, so now uh, Chris Tilley's going to cry that he needs somebody else. So he already did. He already did. He already, he already did. hit you yeah, up, today. did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy, he's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're hugging in public. Eight <laughs> D. Uh, appoint Lawrence Fernand as an acting lieutenant. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Schenker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. Oh, yes. Making sure I'm not messing up here. AE, Municipal Alliance Coordinator, appointment effective July 1st, 2023, June 30th, 2024. Uh, appoint Christina Lizitsky, the Township of Hamilton Municipal Alliance Coordinator, effective July 1st 
through June thirtieth. So moved. Second. second. Motion a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Dr. Witherspoon. Yes. Mayor Patel. Yes. Oh yes. Municipal Alliance Committee appointment effective July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. Appoint regular members of the Township of Hamilton Municipal Alliance Committee for one year, July 1st through June 30th. Regular members, Lisa Catalano, Chair Melanie Mackler, Stacy Rose, Michael Verga, and Lisa Yac Yacarino. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. 8G, resolution to reclassify part-time temporary status community development director to as needed liaison for redevelopment, cannabis license, licensing, and municipal housing. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Question. I have no uh, issue with this, and we I talked to um, township administrator about it. I just wanted to know what is the plan for future. Do we have one for the community development director's position? Yes. Um, we're going to try to transition some of the housing um, responsibilities over to our tax assessor. Um, the other thing that we're looking at is utilizing our planner, who is uh, Palestina, to um, look at the overall uh, vision of the township and see how we want to move forward with marketing some of the some of the properties in the town and um, trying to come up with a game plan on um, what we want to do in the township. Uh, the other idea was to possibly bring in a marketing firm. Um, to guide us on uh, some of these properties and market them properly. Thank you. And this this will be a discussion item soon. Oh yeah. Um, at a at a committee meeting. Uh, I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Shanker. Yes. Dr. Witherspoon. Yes. Mayor Patel. Yes. Oh yes. A resolution to rescind offer of employment. Uh, resolution to rescind offer of employment to John Forgione as a full time laborer. Motion. Second. Motion to second. Do we need a roll call vote on this? Nobody. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patelli? Yes. Resolution to rescind offer of employment to a Cove. 2023 staff member listed on resolution 2023-0216, Charlie Adiambo. Ooh. Good. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. Oh, yes. Resolution to rescind offer of employment to Cove 2023 staff member listed in resolution 2023 0216 or Aurelia Magia. So moved. Boy, I'm bad at names. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. 8K is deleted. Approvals. Minutes, regular minute, regular meeting minutes of May 15th, 2023. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Uh, bill list. Bill list total $1,128,804.51. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Shanker? Yes. Dr. Witherspoon? Yes. Mayor Patel? Yes. Oh, yes. Reports, Mr. Administrator. Real quick, I just want to update the committee on the Atlantic Avenue water main project. It is substantially complete at this time. 
Um, the work at Public Works, the fuel, the uh, fuel tanks has begun. They removed one tank today, and they plan on removing the other by the end of tomorrow. Uh, they'll do some more soil testing. Hopefully, everything's clean, and they'll backfill it and uh, start prepping for the above ground tanks. That's awesome. That's all I have. Good. Mr. Solicitor. The Township Solicitor has no report this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Engineer. Uh, nothing to report besides just uh, the four bids that will be coming in on Thursday, the uh, road, road improvement uh, phase two, uh, New York Avenue, and Atlantic Avenue phase two, and Atlantic Avenue local freight. So they will be all uh, coming in on Thursday, and we'll be reporting to you at the following meeting, at the next meeting. Excellent. Thank you very, very much. Township Committee. Dr. Witherspoon. Yes, I um, attended the Memorial Day um, celebrations at Weymouth Union and um, also at the um, Memorial Park. They were very nice. I got the opportunity at Weymouth um, Memorial Service to meet Miss Virginia Gale, who as you all know, I, it was my first time meeting her, but used to be a township clerk here and has done a lot of things. And it was just a pleasure meeting um, the residents out there. Uh, also, I did go over to Lincoln Memorial. There was no memorial there, but there are a lot of African-American veterans who died in the Civil War in all of the wars too. Maybe sometimes, I probably have to go to a veteran meeting that sees in the future that something could be done at one of those um, between Veterans Day or Memorial uh, during that time. And I, on Saturday, I came to the Pride Day here at the Memorial Park. I was here not long, but I did come and I, I showed my support on that particular day. And last but not least, on Saturday coming, Harry Hartman, Jr. is going to be a, a processional from here. The family doesn't want a lot of fanfare, but I think it's a big deal because it's happening in Mays Landing. Um, I am going to attend. I plan to attend. Not so much to say anything, but to pay my respects. It's been 70 years. It took a long time for him to come home, and he's coming home. So I want to uh, make sure I'm not going to do my radio show that morning. I got somebody else doing it so that I can participate and be a part of the processional. It's history in the making. Um, I just couldn't imagine. It just um, I kind of got teared up. I got a little emotional when I was told that his mother said, if you ever find him, I want you to bury him with me. And the family, are they're honoring her wishes. So um, I'm going to be in attendance to that on Saturday coming. So that's my report. Thank you. Mr. Shanker. Uh, yeah, I would like to uh, also say the Memorial Day events were very good and, and I appreciate all the hard work that goes into putting them on and all those who participated. And also, I'd like to, again, congratulate the Mays Landing Fire Department for their new truck. Um, how long is it going to take to get it now? <laughs> A couple years? Too long. Yeah. They got one in stock? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. So, again, congratulations. And, and uh, Matt, thank you for all your help. Uh, the administrator, Cynthia, uh, took a lot of work. It's, it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, there's a lot of rules and regs we have to follow when purchasing something that large. So uh, we finally got through it, and I could be happier. So time to move on. That's all I have, Mayor. Mrs. Link. Um, I also attended the Memorial Day um, celebration, and uh, the <coughs> uh, speeches were very good and very short which makes everyone very happy that they are not too long. Um, <coughs> the, um, uh, 
the uh, Pride Day was well attended. I also stopped there to, to uh, say hello to Miko, and they were all excited about the, the day's events, and it was very successful. Um, not to say that we don't have a hometown celebration coming up on the 24th. So if anyone wants to be a vendor at that time, you have to get a hold of, I believe, the Mays Landing merchants. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it's uh, uh, something that you would do on Eventbrite to register. Um, other than that, I'm happy that uh, uh, the debt ceiling was alleviated and we passed it. And we're now paying our bills. I couldn't imagine not paying my bill here in May's Landing, um, for especially my taxes. That's right. Mm -hmm. but they're right on top of that. And um, hopefully uh, we'll come to some sort of resolutions on the subcommittee uh, for redevelopment. And I understand we have a meeting tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Well, that's it. Very good. Mr. Cheek? Touching on Dr. Witherspoon and Memorial Day. Tomorrow's June 6th, D-Day. Oh. I looked it up, it was amazing. In 1944, 160,000 of our troops took part of that. Out of that, 5,000 ships, 13,000 airplanes. Not one cell phone, not one beeper. No. How they coordinated, it was amazing. And that day we lost 9,000 troops were either killed or wounded. God bless America. Please think of them tomorrow. And that's it. Absolutely. And all those graves over there, they're all facing east towards America for the American uh, grave sites over in France. So that's uh, pretty impressive. And, and one thing I, I did, I made, uh, I made my girlfriend's daughter, Sherry, uh, um, well, Jordan, I made her watch Saving Private Ryan. She's 15 years old, so she had to cover her ears a couple of times. But uh, she had never seen it, seen it. She didn't understand it. Um, and, uh, and she sat and watched the whole thing, which she normally doesn't do when Carl wants to watch a movie. She tells me that my 80s movies are stupid and she goes and runs upstairs. <laughs> but she stayed and she watched and she got she she was she she was involved in it and uh so that's just something if you have kids that are teenagers that that and, and band of brothers but that's a little bit longer it takes a long time um that's a that's i think that's 12 hours so but anyway moving on um Let's see my notes here. Hometown celebration, as, as it was already brought up, that's going to be Saturday, June 24th. Um, and then, of course, Harry Hartman, that was already brought up. That starts at 10 a.m. here at Town Hall. It'll leave here, go down Route 50, make the left at the light at War Memorial. Um, if you want to attend, uh, the family would like everybody to be at War Memorial Park as the procession goes by and then he will be buried at Holy Cross Cemetery at 11 a.m. So, um, you know, that's, that's, as we've already talked about it, I've talked about it, we've all talked about it a couple of times, that's a, that's a pretty big deal to have Harry Hartman home. Um, and of course, I, I spoke very briefly at the Memorial Day services at, uh, at War Memorial Park. Um, park looks great. Thanks to Public Works, you guys do a great job. Um, one thing that is going to happen is we are gonna do some work on the fountain. Uh, don't know exactly what the plan is. Does that mean that there's not gonna be water in the fountain this year? I guess it's on now. There you go, thank you. I didn't even, didn't even notice. Thank you, um, I appreciate that. And that is, we'll be putting that out to bid, I would assume. Probably. Okay. And Hopefully it doesn't get to that expense. I, uh, we shall see. But it'll be nice to see that. I, I, I enjoy the fountain very, very much. And it'll be nice to know that it'll be, it's fixed and the leaks are done and, and hopefully it'll stay on a little bit longer. 
So that's really all I have to say. Reagan, I'll see you soon. Maddie, miss you, love you. Hope to see you soon. So go ahead and open this up to public comment. Mr. Carrigan. I saw Jordan Saturday night at the Golden Pyramid. What's that? I saw Jordan. Oh, you saw Jordan working. Yes. Yeah. Yes, she's working. Yeah. At the Golden Pyramid. Yes. I have my own report. On Wednesday, July 19th, that's six weeks from now, Jack Chitterelli will, will be at Cousin Mario's. We have a club meeting that night anyway. So uh, just wanted to fill, fill you in on that. Jack Chitterelli, running for governor, will be at Cousin Mario's, 6.30 p.m. Okay. And um, that's, 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 that's something I'm looking forward to. It'll be the second time that, uh, that I've uh, met him. I met him three weeks ago in Galloway Township at the Galloway National Golf Club. And uh, I came away uh, very impressed with the man. So. Um, okay. Uh, spread the word. July, July, July 19th, third Wednesday of the month. Gotcha. Thanks, Jim. Anybody else? You don't have to raise your hand. Just get up. Come on. I was wondering about uh, the. Could you just give it? Give us your name. Teresa DeRose. I was wondering about the uh, public permit for parties uh, for the releasing of balloons. They could ha add it on the permit when they uh, request a permit for like a block party or Memorial Day or whatever celebration to put it on the permit when they sign up for it. Okay. Um, also, um, on Holly Street, we have a big silver uh, reflector. I was wondering if that would be good on uh, Bears Head Road. In the, in the meantime, that we get this here blinking lights for the uh, Chevrons, use that uh, silver reflecting, because that's really bright especially at night when you have your high beams on, you can't see anything until you pass it. Um, also, um, we have on, um, you have on, to add locations, like say on uh, number seven, J and K, and number five, A, you have the actual locations of places you're selling or talking about, can you add that to our uh, correspondence here as far as <coughs> like um, we're authorizing the sale of lot one block 600 who knows where that is if you're not looking at the tax map but if you actually put like on uh, number 3c route 3 52 Pittsburgh Avenue we actually know where that is now we get an idea so we have more of a in you know intellect on what we're going to be thinking about you know, add the actual locations instead of just uh, block six. We're going to sell that, okay, but where is block six? You know, you have to go home and look it up. But if you put it on is here. Is there a reason that we don't put that on there, Brett? The actual address? Some of them don't, Some have, don't address. have addresses. And like, say you're selling it, it doesn't say, is it vacant land? Is it pine lands? Is it a toxic waste pit? Is it, you know, why are we selling it and, you know, who, who is able to buy it? Is it only for corporations, is it for any public person? You know, stuff like that. A little more uh, input. Cause I, like, I like to know what you're talking about when you're talking, you know, just giving me numbers. Like lot one, block 600 on the tax map doesn't tell me where it is. Because I was talking to Aline, and she's like, well, this one's in Millville. Well, I would not have known it was in Millville, because I'm thinking Hamilton Township right here in May's Landing. Well, I would hope we're not selling anything in Millville. No, no, but she was saying, like, it's up on Route 40. I'm like, right. okay, but then you actually have places that actually do have the actual address. And I, oh, okay, I know where that is. Like 
I get Brett said there's no house there. There's no rent. There's, there won't be an the, address. We could put we could we put, put the street, the, the street or the cross street. Yeah, okay. something like that. Well, they're on here for the land sales that we put on. Okay. The land sales are open for the public to bid on, mm -hmm. unless it's contiguous, and that we offer it to the adjoining property owners first. Okay. And then if they don't want it, then it goes to a public sale. Okay. Where anyone can bid on it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion to close. Oh. Oh. Real quick, Susan Lazarczyk. I talked to Steve Jizeki. Um, we, uh, you were asking about, you know, how are we going to pub publicize the balloon release ban? And Steve's um, with Margate Down Beach, and he's really spearheaded this whole thing. And he was just talking about, you know, public awareness messages, articles, and I'll talk to him and work with him, um, you know, and we can work together and to do that. Okay. Right? Thank you. Motion to close. I have a motion. Second. second. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Now we will be. I hear a motion to come back into session. No motion. All those in favor? Aye. Motion to close. I have a motion to close. Second. I have a second. 